Welcome to the Cozy Mystery Quartet, comprised of M.L. Erdahl, Linda Hope Lee, Wendy Kendall, and me, Susan McCormick. We talk all things cozy, and today we discuss a common cozy mystery trope, the falsely accused. This trope is used often and is instantly recognizable to cozy fans who know the first person accused will never be the actual murderer. More likely, the wrongly suspected is the love interest or the best friend of the amateur sleuth, and the trope is used in a way to pull the sleuth in. Agatha Christie used this trope in Five Little Pigs, which became the play Go Back for Murder, and an ordeal by innocence, and a witness for the prosecution, spoiler alert, where she turned the trope on its head by leading the reader to believe the accused man was innocent, only to have it revealed at the end that he was in fact the killer. This trope usually involves another trope, the incompetent or uninterested police officer who makes the arrest based on circumstantial evidence, forcing the amateur sleuth into action and allowing him or her to shine when they solve the crime. In The Fog Lady's Family Matters, book two in the series, Sarah meets a troubled family at a vacation resort in Big Sur. The husband is later arrested for stabbing his wife to death with the kitchen shears, and Sarah's convinced he didn't do it. Spurred on by Mrs. Noonan's knowing the man's mother, the Fog Ladies embark on a treacherous journey to prove the man innocent, never dreaming they will imperil Sarah's friend Helen and her new little family. Here is a scene. Oh, this gets better all the time, said Mrs. Carmichael. He left his wife and child in their unlocked home and went to sit in a park at night. And when he came back, he found his wife in a bloody pool in the kitchen. Is that correct? I know it doesn't look good, said Francis Noonan. But remember, I know his family. You've all met Julia. Sarah, you met the man. He couldn't have done this, could he? Enoch Carmichael watched Sarah intently. She was hesitating, that was for sure. You must have formed some sort of opinion, Olivia Honeycutt persisted, some judgment of the situation. Still, the girl didn't answer. How could she not have an opinion? I only met them briefly, she finally said. I honestly believe that man loved his wife and was trying desperately to change her mind about leaving. Desperate. Mrs. Carmichael latched onto the word. What would a desperate man do? The fog ladies all turned to Sarah. I don't know, Sarah said. I just don't know. In the fog ladies in the soup, book three in the series, due out in the fall, the man who runs the local soup kitchen is arrested for murder of the ce a celebrity chef and the roots of his dislike for the man sprouted years earlier when they ran a restaurant together. Did he do it? We'll see. In neither of my books do I invoke the bungling police officer but I do have plenty of circumstantial evidence, so much so that 80-year-old Enid Carmichael is convinced the accused is actually the murderer. In true Agatha Christie fashion, one day she will be right. Michael, tell us about the falsely accused in your seasonal cozies. Thanks, Susan. A staple of the cozy mystery genre, falsely accusing someone of murder comes in different varieties, and each can be used to move the story forward if implemented properly. What do you think happens in a tight-knit community when the police accuses someone of murder? This accusation can be anywhere from being hauled in for questioning, which naturally starts the rumor mill, to an official arrest. Of course, these actions draw the suspicions of the local populace, who instinctually trust their law enforcement. If the accused is a friend or acquaintance of the amateur sleuth, that unfair treatment can be a powerful motivation to jump into the investigation. Another variety of false accusation is the obvious red herring. An ex-wife or husband after an acrimonious divorce, or possibly a bitter business rival struggling against their competitor. When a body turns up, this is the gossip for the town, and will draw suspicion from the characters in the book and the readers of the story. As Susan pointed out, this can be a unique opportunity to spin this around the more the murderer all along was the one who everyone suspected in the beginning. It goes against conventional thinking, where most cozy readers will disregard these suspects as the erroneous leads they typically are. A third type of false accusation that can be made is by the sleuth themselves. Caught up in a lead, the main character will follow a path to a suspect's doorstep, marshalling facts and logic, only to have their suspicion dashed by an alibi or counter-argument. This type of accusation sweeps the reader up, and they mentally march in lockstep with the main character to solve the crime. If done well, the house of cards crashes down on the reader as hard as the accuser, leading them to doubt their sleuthing skills and forcing them to dig deeper and begin looking at the crime from different angles. Personally, I've used the first technique. In my second book, Spring Upon a Crime, the lovable hostess Roxy is arrested for her boss's murder when found on the scene of the crime with a murder weapon. 
To the readers of my series, this is an outrage. She is a charming hostess and an even better friend. That very friendship is what ropes my amateur sleuth, Crystal Rainey, into investigating the crime to exonerate Roxy. I doubled down on the false accusation by revealing Roxy's checkered past, but used it to build sympathy rather than suspicion when Roxy explained her past felony was due to an unfair misunderstanding rather than any criminal intent. In any good, co- good cozy, the accusations and suspicions fly. Have fun, use them in unique ways, and don't be afraid to muddy the waters for the reader to make them engage their own sleuthing skills. Linda, what are your thoughts on using this trope in cozies? Thank you, Michael. In a cozy mystery, or for that matter, in any other mystery subgenre, the inclusion of falsely accused characters falls into the red herring category. However, because the falsely accused technique has many facets, it deserves a discussion of its own. The main purpose of this plot device is to prevent the sleuth, as well as law enforcement, from determining the crime's true perpetrator. To avoid giving away spoilers for my own stories, I will discuss how to use the falsely accused technique in general terms. 1. The most likely character, and the one who has the strongest motive to engage in false accusations is, of course, the murderer. Here's how he or she might accomplish that goal. A. At the time of committing the crime, the murderer plants evidence at the crime scene that incriminates someone else. B. When the investigation is underway, the murderer plants false evidence in a place where he or she knows the sleuth will uncover it. C. The murderer lies to the sleuth about the person he wants to be charged with the murder. Perhaps the murderer hopes to implicate a person he has a grudge against, or someone he wants to eliminate from a competition they are engaged in. 2. A character who is not the murderer engages in false accusation. A. The person he falsely accuses is a rival he wants to eliminate. B. He's retaliating for a wrong done to him by falsely accusing his enemy. C. He has a grudge against the sleuth and wants to confuse and or embarrass her by having her pursue a false accusation. 3. Law enforcement might initiate the false accusation, acting on information or clues delivered in the methods outlined above that are false. In these cases, most likely, the sleuth will eventually uncover the truth and thus free the falsely accused. Lastly, and in a category all its own, is to have the sleuth herself be falsely accused. This elicits reader sympathy and also provides strong motivation for her involvement. So, you can see there are many ways to use this plot device. Take a look at your stories and see if you can incorporate the falsely accused technique to enrich your plot and challenge your sleuth. Wendy. Tell us how you have used the falsely accused technique in your stories. Thanks, Linda. Well, listeners, have you ever been falsely accused of something? As a child, did your sister leave a mess spilled in the kitchen and you got blamed? How did that make you feel? You were falsely accused and probably had to succumb to consequences. And your sister is so relieved she made it look like it wasn't her. And now she's got away with it and shifted attention off herself. Your brother may have been a witness and known the truth, but may have decided he'd rather not get involved. Or he may decide not to say anything because if he does, then the parents will know he was in the kitchen when he was supposed to be upstairs doing his homework. Or maybe he decided to stay silent just long enough to use his information as leverage to blackmail the real guilty party all this sounds like a mystery plot 
A cozy mystery author must empathize with each of these character types situation. The author must be able to write scenes from the perspective of each in a way that is credible and pulls at a reader's heart and suspicions. Each character has their own compelling motivations and seeing what action they're driven to take is the excitement and the intrigue of the story. In my mystery, Cat Out of the Bag, the police immediately suspect Mayor Brenda Durling was killed at the gala party by her husband, Russ. Catherine Watson, my amateur sleuthing purse designer, has been friends with Brenda and Russ for many years, and she's outraged he could be suspected. She goes to see Russ, and he reacts to losing his wife and being falsely accused, and shows his anger with Catherine for the unwitting part she played. You can feel what it's, you can't feel what it's like to be pulled away from your beloved wife's body at the morgue by the police who arrest and take you down to the station, stuff you in some tiny room and question you for hours because they think you murdered your wife because you're caught in some fictional affair. Russ whirled around and his red face made her jump. He squinted in a way that Catherine thought screamed pain. You don't know what it's like to call your lawyer, pay bail, and be told by a detective to stay, stay available for further questions, to come home to cops, taking things they call evidence from your home. You've never had to tell your kids that they'll never see their mother again because you didn't do something you should have. Devastated, Catherine cried. There was nothing she could say to explain herself or to make him feel better. It was obvious that of all people, she was not the one who could bring him any comfort. Russ, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Oh, well, Brenda's so-called friend is sorry. Well, that makes up for, for all of it. Russ walked to the overstuffed leather chair and collapsed into it, staring at the fireplace. When an amateur sleuth has a list of suspects, some of those listed are falsely accused. The cozy mystery relies on the reader's unwavering conviction that each of those accused are innocent until proven guilty. The amateur sleuth is going to have to find the clues that prove which suspect had the means, motive, and the opportunity and truly committed the crime. The amateur sleuth and the author are required to do their best work to solve the mystery and present their case at the end. The stakes are high. The police and justice must be convinced. And even higher the stakes, the reader must be satisfied that the falsely accused are safe and the true criminal has been caught. Thanks everyone for listening and be sure to like and subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode.